Dear Past Liz, Today I finally resolved to repair the blue coat, like you promised to do two years ago. I want you to know the full degree to which this became future Liz's problem. Regards, future Liz. Dear future Liz, Well, that sounds like me. Cheers, past Liz. Dear past Liz, What on earth happened with this button placket? Did, did you use embroidery floss for attaching the buttons? No wonder they all fell off. Dear future Liz, is embroidery floss not good for that? All right, noted. Sounds like I learn a lot in the next two years. Dear past Liz, yeah, you, you definitely learn a lot. I can't even tell what you did to the lining to create this mess. How? Just... just... how? Dear future Liz, sorry about that. Dear past Liz, God damn it. Okay, I confess, this pattern is not the clearest. Dear future Liz, well, let me know if you have any questions. In the meantime, tell me how it's been going. Past Liz, even with your zero sewing experience, you knew that pockets are a must, right? Where are Rosie's cookies supposed to go? Dear future Liz, <sighs> Dear past Liz, Okay, screw it. This pattern is trash. I cannot believe you made as much of it as you did back then. Kudos. Dear future Liz, noted. In the meantime, tell me what's been going on. Dear past Liz, well, in a few months, toilet paper will not be available for love nor money, and you will feel strangely validated that years ago you started buying it in bulk online. Dear future Liz, the toilet paper thing seems weird. You can't tell me more about that? Dear past Liz, yeah, it has been weird. Hey, why did you add the wool interlining to the whole coat? All it does is make the lower half less swishy. I've cut it off at the hips. It's much better now. Dear future Liz, that's a great idea. Thanks! Also, your skating around any questions about the future is kind of freaking me out. You know we can't regulate our anxiety response. Dear past Liz. <clears throat> Dear future Liz. Come on, just let me have it. Dear past Liz. Bugger it, this lining is a beast. Dear future Liz, ugh. Dear past Liz, ugh, fine, fine. I can't tell you much. Time is like that. What I can say is that things are about to get harder for everyone. The best I can do is explain what it felt like. Remember that night in November 2016, when we were at Arlene's Grocery in New York, rushing upstairs during set breaks to stare helplessly at the CBS election coverage? It was like that, but for months on end. It wasn't all bad, though, I promise. There were good things, too. You know that YouTube channel that you've been putting off making for no reason? You've made over 50 videos, and people seem to like them, and some of them even give you money for it. 
I still can't quite believe that, so it's okay if you don't believe it. I know at this point you're doubting your ability to stick to a hobby or a job, and you're worried that this is yet another flash in the pan, but in a few weeks, you will have been making and recording videos for two years. You have more ideas and goals than ever. You will make great friends, and develop professional relationships. Your most popular video ever will feature you eating Cheez-Its in what used to be a duvet cover. However, your favorite is still your reading of A Child's Christmas in Wales. Past Liz, I started this letter writing conceit as a silly joke, a way to poke fun at your magnificent overconfidence and this slight disaster of a coat. But while I was writing the script in my head, I started to think on what the last two years have been. I thought how long and how hard you worked on this coat which only took me four days to remake. I reflected on what I know now and what that knowledge has meant for me. Finally, to paraphrase from a familiar novel, the tumult of my mind was now so painfully great, I knew not how to support myself, and from actual weakness, sat down and cried for half an hour. This was sad and happy, and I cannot begin to describe how much one cannot be divided from the other in the last two years. You're going to experience fear like you've never imagined. Sometimes it will overcome you. But you will sometimes, I may say often, bear it with the kind of bravery of which I have not yet known the like. In the next two years, your all-too-trusting heart will be broken. Badly. By people who you know, by the world, and by the past as it continues to be better known. You will also cause your share of heartbreak. You will say things that you shouldn't, when you shouldn't, and you will be silent when your voice is most needed. You will reckon with the worst of yourself, and it will risk to tear you asunder. Yet you will come out the other side swinging, full of fire, and knowing finally what matters to you, and you will no longer be afraid. Liz, these two years will surge and ebb, tossing you about on stormy seas that you cannot yet fathom. And what a sailor you are on the other side of this storm. The deep and wine-colored sea expands before you, as unknown as ever, but you have learned when to be cautious and when to be daring. I am so proud of this challenge you have set for yourself. Please forgive my irascible tone when I first took out my pen. I ought not to lecture you. This reckless abandon of yours is at the very heart of who you are, and I would not have you trade it for the world. All my love, Liz. P.S. Your Reckless Abandon is now also known as the Chaos Demon. You named him Jeff. Cheers. <laughs>